Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today for our AMS webinar uh, series. And um, it looks like we have um, a number of new users uh, attending. So uh, thank you for uh, being here with us. So we're going to start out by uh, just going over the, the typical workflow that you would take when you start any CAM uh, job with uh, our Mixup CAM products. We're going to start up in the top left corner. And obviously, you're going to load your part. And you're going to define your stock geometry, uh, not mentioned, but also you uh, define your setup, uh, everything that you need uh, to start programming uh, the part. So if we take the arrow to the right, the very top, we see uh, three uh, balloons in the middle. Uh, create roughing operations, create pre-finishing operations, and create finishing operations. Now, depending on your part, you know, what you need to do, you, you know, you may not need a pre-finishing, you may just need a finishing. So, but this is an idea of the, the process uh, that you're going to take. Now, if you move to the right, the far right, you see uh, simulate uh, material removal. And you see that that arrow goes to the left uh, and the right. So anytime you create a new operation, uh, you want to simulate it so you get an understanding of where that tool is going to go, how it's going to cut. And uh, you want to do that every time, like I mentioned, every time you make an edit, but also every time you, you add another operation uh, because now, for instance, a second operation will be based on the cup material simulation of the first. So you need to do a complete uh, simulation of all of your operations to get a clear understanding. And um, there are some users who they get comfortable using the product and they decide that they don't need to do a simulation. Well, I'm going to tell you, you need to do one every single time. Even if you understand what's going to happen and it's not really complicated, it will highlight areas that uh, you may not have thought about, and it'll protect you from possibly uh, damaging a tool or some uh, stock. Now, we'll talk very briefly about uh, the machine and the setup. We've got two graphics here. Uh, the one on the left uh, shows uh, the default uh, set up when you run the product. So when you run the product, you'll see that you have you have one setup defined in your machining job called setup one. Uh, that setup, the orientation, meaning the the x, y, and z axes, uh, by default are aligned with your world uh, origin in the CAD system. So by default, the x is to the right, uh, the y is looking into the machine. And the Z obviously is pointing up uh, to the machine spindle. So for the uh, you know express standard expert configurations, this is the setup you're going to see, and you can't change that in those configurations. You have one setup, and if you need to move your part around, then obviously you can't move the setup. So you have to move your part if you need to orient it uh, uh, properly or uh, a different way than you want to. So on the right, in addition to uh, defining a setup that uh, matches the coordinate system of your machine, uh, you can also add uh, what we call work zero. So uh, by default, when you open up a new uh, drawing or model uh, to machine, like I said, the, the setup one is aligned with the world origin. Also, that becomes the zero origin uh, location uh, to calculate uh, your tool paths. Uh, you can move that origin, okay? Uh, even in the, uh, the standard, in, in the early configuration, you can move that origin by creating a work zero and uh, put that work zero underneath your uh, setup one. And you can define where that work zero is, whether it's uh, you know, at the top of your stock, bottom of your stock, however you want to locate uh, that work zero. And then that work zero will then become uh, the coordinate origin uh, for all tool paths. Okay, let's talk a little bit about geometry. In our CAM products, you can uh, program tool paths uh, 
with uh, just lines and curves. Like a, you may have a wireframe drawing. Typically, wireframe drawings are not used much anymore. But if you had just a 2D drawing top view uh, of a part that you needed to machine, uh, you could use that uh, in conjunction with uh, two and a half axis uh, toolpath methods to machine your part. If you're going to work in three axis, you do need to have uh, a part model. You need to at least have a surface. Okay, it doesn't have to be a solid. You can machine just a single surface in three axis. Uh, typically, though, you you will have a a poly surface or a group of surfaces or a closed poly surface, uh, which is actually a solid model. So you can use uh, solid models, uh, open poly surfaces, etc., for three axis. Now, the bottom left uh, uh, part, you can use two and a half axis methods. Uh, on a 3D solid uh, as well. So on the far right, you see a, a mesh object. Uh, these are produced by point clouds, uh, which in turn are produced typically by a scanning uh, device for scanning a part that you want to reverse engineer uh, back into the CAD system. And you can also machine uh, these uh, faceted mesh data with uh, three axis methods. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, the difference between two and a half axis and three axis. Um, basically, it's defined in how the tool moves. If you look on the left side, you'll see that the tool, we have a, a red arrow X and a Y arrow Y, I mean a, a green arrow Y. Uh, the tool can move in these two axes simultaneously, uh, but it's fixed in its z-axis. So you define the depth of the tool to cut, and it will stay fixed at that depth and move in x and y. So and the movement in x and y will be contained by the control geometry uh, that you select. Now in three axis, you see that we have a third uh, z-axis in blue. So in three axis, the tool can move in the X and the Y and the Z simultaneously. Uh, it may not be moving in the Z at all times, uh, and it may not be moving in either the X or the Y at all times, but you know, it will and can move in all three directions uh, as needed uh, at the same time. So that's just real basic understanding of the difference, uh, how the tool moves in both two axis uh, and three axis. And if you look on the right also, you see a, um, a boundary curve at the base of that part. Uh, you can contain uh, your three axis operations to the control geometry uh, that you select. So basically the underlying uh, part in three axis is controlling the tool because it cannot, it won't go, it won't gouge the part. It'll use that part uh, as a guide to cut uh, over it. Now let's talk about three axis. Uh, similar to how we talked about uh, two and a half axis, we have three examples here looking down in the XY plane. Uh, on the left, we all three of these operations are parallel finishing operations. Okay, so we have control geometry, which serves as containment to contain uh, the tool path. And in uh, finishing operations in three axis, again, the tip of the tool will go to and stop on uh, the control geometry you select. So in this example, the tool is going right to the edge of the geometry, it's stepping over, coming back, stepping over, etc. In the middle uh, picture, this is actually looking down on a sphere. So in this uh, illustration, we selected the perimeter of the sphere uh, at the uh, split point of the sphere. And similar to the uh, left image, the tool goes right to the edge uh, of the control geometry, which is the uh, right of the edge at the sphere, and it comes back and forth, steps over, etc. Now, the one on the right, um, if you notice, so you probably already, I'm going to show you this in more detail in the next slide, you're probably going to wonder, well, this tool is not going to reach all the way down, you know, to, to the perimeter or parting plane of that sphere. So there's uh, times when you want to offset 
this control geometry outward to give the tool more room to get down around the side. So let's look at this next slide and you'll see it uh, in more detail. Uh, the one on the left, we're doing a parallel finishing on a flat area and the tool stops at the perimeter. And in the center, uh, new users um, don't understand yet that in parallel finishing, the center axis of the tool will stop when it uh, aligns itself vertically with the control geometry. So if you just use the perimeter of your, uh, uh, your sphere, or if you just select the sphere itself, it's not gonna go all the way down to the parting plane. It's gonna stop when the tool uh, center line uh, aligns with the control geometry. If you want it to go all the way down, this is when you want to actually draw an offset curve. And you're going to do this a lot in three axis, and you're going to uh, want to adjust this offset depending on what you want that tool to do uh, in that uh, area right there. It may be a little larger than the tool radius, uh, but typically it won't be any smaller uh, than the tool radius. And then also the green uh, surface, what will happen if that surface is not there and you offset the control geometry, the tool will come down. And when it touches that control geometry, it'll immediately retract to the clearance plane. It will not go any deeper uh, than your control geometry. It won't gouge, uh, it, it won't risk gouging uh, any uh, material, so it'll retract. So that's why you have a plane there as a reference surface to eliminate all those retracts. It has a, a place for the tool to stop, do its transfer, uh, cut, uh, transfer motion, and then start up again. So this is uh, a concept you really need to understand uh, starting out uh, in three-axis machining. Again, uh, in three-axis, you also have cut levels, both in roughing uh, and in finishing. Uh, we have an example here on the left of a typical uh, horizontal roughing uh, cut level. And if you look at the dialogue here in the middle, for the cut levels tab, uh, you can determine how you want the tool to step down. You have different options uh, for how much of a step down you want to uh, use. Uh, you got minimized stair steps. This is a more advanced function. We'll talk about that at a later time. You can tell it, do I want to cut all the way down in a pocket before I go to the next pocket, or do I want to clear it by levels? And then cut levels, you also can set some containments, don't go any deeper than a certain dimension, don't go any higher than a certain dimension, or if you want to make sure the tool uh, clears a flat area and puts a tool path right on a flat surface, you can check this box here. Uh, on the right, we have uh, a Z, what's called a Z containment uh, tab in three axis. This, bit, this allows you to control uh, the cut levels in three axis. You can give it a range, you can tell it don't cut any higher than this location, any deeper or any uh, further down than this location, and you can tell it to cut in multiple levels. So in three axis multiple levels, it'll cut the level when it gets to the actual part, it'll start cutting, cutting the contour uh, of the part. Just one second. Now here, and this is talking about how stock is calculated in three axes. So if you look in the um, in each of the horizontal or roughing or parallel finishing, uh, either uh, of the three axis uh, operation dialogue, you have a value for stock. Stock is calculated. Uh, if you if you look at this closely, you see it's got a stair step uh, for the cut levels, and it'll leave the amount of stock uh, from uh, any point on the tool, on the perimeter bottom edge of the tool away from uh, the part surface. And if you clear, use clear flats, you'll see that it cuts right down on the flat areas. Uh, that'll clear that stock uh, from all the flat areas. And then in finishing, uh, the same goes. If you leave a stock amount of 0.1, it's obviously going to leave 0.1 of stock uh, all around uh, the contoured areas. Now, let's talk about uh, just basic post-processing here. Uh, on the left, you see the, uh, the post-processor dialog. We have added uh, over 600 posts to our 2022 product. So we got 
tons of post processors. More than likely, one of those will be the tool controller uh, that on your CNC machine. Uh, you can start out with one of those. If you run into any uh, issues or any alarms or whatnot, just let us know and we can help you uh, make some adjustments uh, to that post uh, for your specific to your machine. And then in the center uh, posting, obviously you can post an operation, you can post the entire setup, or you can uh, use the control key and select multiple operations, right click and post uh, those. And obviously, uh, example of some posted uh, output. Okay, now we're gonna go through this real quick. This, these parts that we're talking about here, we do have a tutorial uh, already worked up for you. Uh, if you go to the online help, I'll show you if I have time exactly where to go, but go to the online help, uh, select the resource guide, go down to the mill module and you'll see these two uh, tutorial PDF documents uh, using the same parts. And again, um, we have two documents for uh, tips and best practices and two and a half and three axis. These are must read when you have time, look at these. Uh, it'll give you a lot of good tips and a lot of good practices to use.